it's working. So, hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I do apologise. We had a massive tech issue. Uh, I hope you can see me. Can uh, a few of you just just tell me if you can hear me? Because I apologise. We're late. We had a right problem. <clears throat> hello, hello. Hello, Ken. Hello, everybody. Can somebody just say, yes, we can hear you. You are good. We can hear you and see you. It would make a huge difference. Excellent. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Really apologize. We're late. We went live bang on time and uh, it didn't work. Because guess who? Mr. Brown, who is not good with tech at the best of times, had something set wrong in YouTube. So my apologies. Anyway, right. Bear with me. I am nearly there. I'm nearly with you. I'm nearly there. I just need to go and get my notes back. Here we go. So, right. Again, thank you so much. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to get stuck straight in. So... <sighs> I am so proud of you guys. I'm just blown away by what you're producing. And, you know, thank you. I noticed a big difference in the types of images we're getting. Thank you for not just going to your archives. This is about stretching our creativity, about seeing and thinking in new ways and just using this time constructively. Uh, I think it's completely amazing. We're seeing all sorts of stuff from close-ups and still lives and pics of families, beautiful pictures of your families. Multiple exposures, you know, someone's been out in the backyard smashing bottles and glasses. It's just so exciting seeing what you've done. Huge shout out to all of you guys. I also want to give a huge shout out to all of you people that are buying my online courses at the moment because you are keeping the boat afloat. You are helping me keep things going and you are, of course, helping these kinds of events keep going. So thank you so, so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, I also want to do another quick shout out to one of our lovely followers. I can't do it. That's annoying because, again, I said we've had a lot of tech issues. I want to give a, a shout out to um, Kathy Muir, who has been doing some really cool... looking for so guys uh, every saturday night sitting on the seventh step she's going to be doing seven songs um on instagram live take a quick screenshot or take a photo of this go to instagram and find kathy because uh, it's all in support of a great cause please donate a little bit of money to the red cross who are doing huge work with coronavirus etc so i guess i should introduce you to our judge this week, the man who set you the challenge that you have had to face. So I would like you all to please welcome David Newton. David is an amazing photographer. He is a trainer like me. He trains for Canon. He has been editor of technical editor for Canon Zeos magazine, all sorts of stuff. Welcome, David, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Fantastic, fantastic. And I think you've had a tough choice this week, haven't you? I certainly have had a tough choice this week. Um, it was it was not easy. There were a lot of really great entries. Um, I spent quite a while going through them. Uh, when I set the, 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 the topic, the colour of life, I, I realised it was a very vague, very broad topic. Uh, and I hoped that was going to give you a lot of creative scope. And seemingly so it proved. The, the the pictures that came in there was some absolute crack in there uh, and it was really great to see people taking it seriously and, and as I said not visiting their archives but actually trying to come up with something different and new uh, push the boundaries of what they're capable of what their kit's capable of and, and hopefully learn something uh, about themselves and about their photography along the way 
It's always tough judging these things too, isn't it? It's it's like, you know, it's not a five minute job just skimming through. It is absolutely not a five minute job. There were a lot of entries and uh, uh, I sat down and thought, oh, you know, I'll, I'll it'll be, it'll probably take 15, 20 minutes, I'll go through them. And then I saw all the entries and they were so good, I actually had to give them a lot more time. I ended up spending probably a couple of hours going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards through the uh, through the pictures, uh, trying to get down. And, and you set me the, the task of choosing a winner and five runners up um, after my... I think the third call I was still at 40 pictures. So getting down to that winner and five uh, was really quite challenging. And that's that's testament to all the great pictures that were entered. It, it made my job as judge really, really tough. And yeah, there's some really cool ones. There's one or two which we're going to have a little chat about before we start later on going into the winners and, and, all, and the runners up and all the rest of it. Um, I just want to let you guys know that um, I, I met David... Um, at exposure last year and what he doesn't know sort of say as well that um if you get a chance to go out to the united arab emirates to sharjah and attend exposure i think david you'd agree it's, it's one of the most it's it's the most inspirational photography event i have ever attended Oh, absolutely. Without doubt. Um, what's really interesting is, you know, you, the, the organisers, Simon, brings together uh, a huge collection of photographers, Pulitzer Prize winners, you know, World Press Photo winners, um, the absolute creme de la creme of, of the photography world, people whose work I've admired for years. Uh, you know, year on year, we see phenomenal photographers and phenomenal work uh, going through that and exhibiting there. And what's really interesting, um, and I think everybody can relate to this, is that we all feel like we're imposters. We all get there and we're all like, we don't deserve to be here. Oh my God, that person's work is amazing. How are we here? And, and, and you have so many conversations with people like that. And it's really lovely to, in some cases, meet heroes and find out they're just as down to earth and normal as... as you are as I am, uh, and and everyone is just as you know, insecure about their own work, which is why competitions like this, where you've got to put your work online, or where you put stuff into a competition, or you put it up in an exhibition, is so great because it helps drag everyone out of their shell. It gives you a bit more confidence about your work and, and maybe pushes you a little bit further. And exposure certainly does that. It's just a great event of learning, uh, of seeing phenomenal photographers and, and absolute groundbreaking photography work uh, so yeah as mike said highly recommend going if, uh, if you ever get the chance if you can get out to exposure you know google it it's spelled with an x go and do it it's not a trade show it's an inspiration show and uh, unfortunately david and i were the, are the two main trainers we were running workshops throughout although all, all these amazing people were doing these incredible speaks and in speeches in the auditoriums david and i never got to hear any of them because we were running back-to-back -back workshops <laughs> not, not, not a single one not a single one simon newton if you are listening <laughs> yeah uh, he's oh, the I've, had words. I've had words yeah me too anyway let's um let's get on with what we were doing so david i just want to ask you a couple of quick questions guys forgive me looking away from you i've got another laptop over here which is where i've got my notes and stuff um how did you get into photography, David? Oh dear God! You said you were going to ask me questions that uh, that you didn't prep me for. Uh, I uh, it sounds really stupid. I bought a camera. I went to university in Bangor in North Wales to study marine biology. That was my first degree. And when I got there, everyone's from Snowdonia. Big shout out to Snowdonia. Um, beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Um, and I got there and thought it's really lovely. I, sh I should maybe take take some pictures of this and I think the guy that was uh, in halls with me the guy in the room opposite me he was a bit into photography and I thought that seems like a really good idea uh, I've always been very techy and geeky uh, I have a student loan uh, and uh, uh, yeah I didn't I didn't drink it away I, I bought a camera uh, and here I am I have more years than I care to admit later absolutely and I mean you shoot some pretty interesting clients too don't you I shoot for all sorts of people and I shoot all sorts of different work. Um, I, my career has been very varied. I've spent my life 
trying to not be pigeonholed into one genre of photography. There's this, there's this thing that uh, within photography, if you want to be like known or successful or whatever, you have to do one thing and do it really, really well. Um, whereas I've tried to tread the path of doing everything. Admittedly, I do everything fairly mediocrely. Um, but I I like the variety of, of shooting all sorts of different things. If someone said to me, oh, you can only photograph, I don't know, Formula One for the rest of your life, I should be like, no, no. That, that, as, as exciting as that might be, I would get very bored of it very quickly. If they said you can only shoot insects for the rest of your life, I'd get very bored. So I... I like to shoot lots of different subjects, and I find by shooting different subjects, I bring different techniques across, so my pictures maybe look a little different to others because I, I don't approach it in quite the same way, perhaps. At least that's what I hope. Yeah, you know, and David's I... being very, very modest there. Now, we, as you know, we had some tech issues getting online. I had a bunch of his pictures that he didn't know I was going to be putting on screen while he was talking. <laughs> um, go visit uh, Google David Newton Photo Positive. Go and have a look at his website because uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't show you those pictures. But then you also, you got into training. What is it about training I did you enjoy? Get into training. Uh, um, it's those loud moments. So, like I said, I was the technical editor of EOS magazine. I was then the technical editor of um, Canon Professional Network, CPN website, uh, from its launch for, for several years. Uh, many years, in fact, and through that, I just got into doing training, giving workshops, doing one to one, and I enjoy that moment when someone learns something. It's it's really hard to explain, and if you've never really taught anybody, you you can't explain it. But um, when when you tell someone something and they connect some dots, and you see those little sparks going off in their head, and they go like, oh. oh. Oh, okay. Now that oh, now I can use this to do that, um, and and seeing that light bulb moment and how people then go on and take what you've taught them and create something amazing um, is is really fulfilling. I guess um, it's, it's really, really really an enjoyable process. There isn't really a better way to make a living, really, is there? No, no, absolutely, absolutely not. Um, it's. Uh, uh, yeah, um, it's 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 just it's an enjoyable way of doing it. Communicating with people, teaching people about photography, about something that I'm incredibly passionate about, uh, is is it's just a great thing to do. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Um, sorry, I'm getting little messages in the side here because, uh, as you know, we had a few tech issues, which is definitely down to yeah. me. David, if you had one tip for someone who wants to improve, what would that be? Oh, <laughs> okay. The the tip that I normally tell people is learn to learn what your camera can do, uh, and that means you know understand the menus, understand the buttons and where they are and what they do, because photography is photography is kind of this unholy alliance between science and art, and the science side of it is things like focusing and exposure with shutter speeds and apertures and ISO. Uh, and the art side of it is all about your composition and your framing and what you're including, what you're not including. And they require kind of two different thought processes. If you are spending so much time trying to figure out what your camera is doing or pushing buttons, or looking at the menu or, or going, oh, technically I need to do this for the exposure, oh, 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 then you're not concentrating on the composition and the, the creative aspect as well. And what you need to do is bring both sides of them together so by learning your camera by learning um where all the buttons are and how to use it in a heartbeat without having to think about it you free up that part of your brain that concentrates on the creativity on the composition uh, and, and hopefully you you get to bring the two together so my top tip is learn your kit learn your camera that's that's yeah that's number one i think and absolutely and you know if you think about it really there's only a handful of controls on a camera anyone actually needs there are many many features and other things which are useful but if you look at the great photographers of yesterday they had maybe a shutter an aperture and a focus ring and that's all they had um you know their images were blowing us away for centuries and hundreds of years and and they still are today so with your whiz bang dslr and a little tiny bit of knowledge but then stretch that creativity muscle which is what this whole photography lockdown thing is about 
Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it is. Um, I just need to quickly interrupt. There's a few messages coming in saying the audio quality is really, really bad. And we know David and I were messing around for a good 45 minutes and it does come and go a bit. Bear with us, guys. He's still audible. We know it's not the best. It is what it is. Um, you're all right, David. Try switching the microphone later. If it gets any worse, I'll let you know. No, yeah, fine, fair enough. <laughs> I'm not touching anything. <laughs> so, shall we move on? Shall we, do you want to share your screen well, and show us? Uh, I can do. Before we do, yes. Just before we do, I'm so I've got the live feed. I've got live feed on the iPad, so I can see it coming. In. I know there's a couple of questions that have come in, um, and. Do you, want to, do you want to answer a couple of these? Some I would rather them. wait because um, Emma is okay. harvesting questions at the other end and she's oh, feeding well, them through enough. to me. So we're going to do a QA and a at the end. Uh, we're going to work our way through this. Maybe just we want to have a little chat about. Then we're going to go through okay. some runners up, the winner, and then we're going to open it up yep. for a QA. and a At the end, we will finish around about 8 p.m. I'll try and keep it on time. Might go on a bit longer if you like, guys, because <laughs> apologies. You're going to try lateness. and stop me talking, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, again, this is another thing. It's a weird thing. Photographers, I find, t tend to be really, really good at being on their own, quite good at spending time in their own company. And yet, when you put a few of them in a room together who have similar views and opinions, they won't stop <laughs> bloody talking. And it was <laughs> like that at exposure, talking. wasn't it? It was like. And also, because the, the, the guy who set it up for uh, Sheikh, um, for the Sheikh Sultan, Sultan bin Ahmed Al Qasimi, um, he, you know, he he handpicked everybody to make sure they were the right sort of person as well, and that just creates such an enormous buzz. But uh, yeah, we do that. Um, David, yeah. So, uh, do you want to share your screen? We'll do the questions at the end. If you want to choose our discussion images, and we can share my chat. screen. Uh, and we're going to start with uh, your selects, aren't we? Yeah, let's just go with the, the ones we thought we'd have a little chat about and uh, a discussion. Are you still alive? Oh dear, have we lost David? Looks like we might. Got me. You have got me. Good, we're back. Hello. Okay, hello, David. We got you. Right, let's just make that a bit bigger so people can see your screen properly. Okay. So these images, guys, these are some that we, I, these, I, I picked these ones. The ones that I had a look at and thought, yeah, somebody's really tried hard. They've really worked. And I just thought we'd have a little chat and just maybe give you a little bit of constructive criticism and a few ideas. Um, and hopefully everybody will learn a bit from it. So if you want to ping one up, Ping them up, David. Ping them up. Here we go. Let's get the first one up. Uh, and uh, let's hope. Oh, hang on. For some reason, it's not showing up. Oh, now I'm having technical issues. Thank you. <laughs> Bear in mind, Sorry. ladies and gentlemen, this is the technical editor of Canon <laughs> Seos. <laughs> Former, former technical former, editor former, of Canon. Yeah, that, maybe that's it. why. <laughs> yeah, there's a good reason why, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Let's try this. Try How about it. now? We've got your your. How your about find, that? We've just got to find a window. No, no, no. You don't. Yes, yes, yes. We have. You shouldn't have. Oh, now we've got it. Now we're there. What? That's that's there cool. No, go. no, we've Look got it. That. We've got it. We've got it. Um. I love this idea. I, I really did. I love this picture. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name because it's in Arabic and, and I apologize. I did actually put you through Google Translate, but I have left the little note I wrote it on at home. So but I think it's such a great idea and it just doesn't quite work for a couple of reasons. Um, to me, there's a couple of things. The eye of the word life is yellow and it's against another yellow block. So it's kind of lost the dot on the eye. Maybe if you'd had a yellow eye with a blue, you know, little dot above it, I think it would have worked a lot better. It's also a tiny bit underlit. I think it could have done with a little bit more exposure and maybe just wait for the decisive moment when I'm guessing it's it's your 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 child. But when the child if you could catch a moment when the child looked up, a little moment, a little flicker, an expression, and it's great that, that she's absorbed in what she's doing, but a little bit of engagement with the viewer, I think, would have maybe helped transmit a little bit of the child's excitement 
across to the viewer, help sort of bring it over. What do you think, David? So for me, uh, I, I agree with Mike. This was um, this was one that I stopped and came back to a couple of times, and I I really liked it. But again, I thought it could have gone a little bit further. So for me, the Swiss ball in the background—that's that grey bally thing that needed to be out of the way as did the the legs on the right hand side and then finally the camera angle just needed to be a bit lower at the moment it feels a little bit high looking down um and you're just slightly looking down on the child if you come down and it wouldn't be much maybe i don't know six inches it would feel that much more intimate because you'd be right at the child's level and also for me it would straighten up the verticals of the doors and those the convert slightly converging verticals just bug me ever so slightly so i think getting lower getting right down um and then as mike said just waiting for that bit of eye contact just waiting for, to look up and just catch that momentary eye the light on the face would be beautiful when when they look up because you've got that beautiful soft light coming in uh, and then i think it would have been an absolute corker um, but for me uh, really good just just missed slightly absolutely absolutely let's have a look at the next one uh, let's have a look at the next one here we go uh, the next one is here we've just got a little tiny bit of the next one in the middle of your screen dave not yet you know you at the moment but it's <laughs> 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 Wow, there's a delay basically. There, there is a delay somewhere. There's something uh, not working. And now, now this is a chap who had mega speed. Maybe try doing them one at a time in um, preview. We'll make it into a slideshow. Yeah. We had so much trouble with this when we were testing. Believe it or not, we spent an hour and we don't know what's going on. I do apologize guys. It's 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 very very frustrating. How's is that any better? Nope. Basically, there's a delay. There's a delay coming through to you, which is then uh, a delay. <sighs> Wowzers. Okay, hang on, hang on. Just just just. <laughs> You're gonna to have to see me again for a moment, and then we're gonna go back to. School. Okay. Sorry about this. Oh, uh, oh, and yeah, I can't display them uh, on mine at the moment. Can you select them all and just no. put them on as a slideshow, a preview slideshow? That's that's what I'm trying to. Do. Okay, there you go. Try that. Try that. It seems there's a delay in in the software that we're using to pick up the pictures, so uh, <laughs> we might just have to work our way around it. <laughs> there we go. Try that. How about that? Can you see that? That's now? better. <clears throat> That's better. Mm. And I mean, you know, again, this is a great, you know, it is, it is such a good attempt. Um, I can't, I can't, it's very small on my screen. Kate Lord, yeah? Uh, yes, Kate, uh, this is Kate Lord. Kate, again, a, a, a great attempt. And I love the, the, the whole motorcycle theme. I hope you're a motorcyclist. Send us a message in, in, in the live chat if you are. Kudos to all bikers. We're going mad because we can't go out on our motorcycles rather than because we can't go out on our cameras. Um, absolutely splendid shot. Um, the only thing I would say is it's possibly a little bit underexposed, possibly a little underlit. But the thing which gets me is the towel. Now, I know where it came from. You're thinking, I need something to put this on. But it kind of looks like you chucked a towel under it, which is, of course, what you did. If you've got a, even if it's a scruffy old tabletop, uh, I don't know, a bench in the garage where your bike lives or, or something like that, I just think it would make a difference. To me, it's just the fact that there's a towel there. Uh, forgive me. I know we all get wet when we go out biking, but um, what do you think, David? I, I'd agree with you. I'm, I'm not totally sold on a towel as a base for a picture. Um, it's if you're looking for something to do some some macro work on or, or flat lays or, or nice layouts like this, if you've got a nice wooden kitchen table, go for that. If you don't have a wooden kitchen table uh, and it's something you want to do more of, you can buy off cuts of lino that look like wooden flooring. Um, they're not very much, or you can go on on I think you know Amazon or various other online places and they'll sell um, you know A2 prints of things that look like wooden tables. Um, 
and therefore you've got a, a whole variety of different options as to what you can uh, what you can use uh, and it just would give it a slightly more polished look uh, than than the towel uh, beyond that i mean I, I love the concept i love the fact that you actually put some things together put some thought into uh, into the picture um and and that quote on the guy martin book is uh, is fantastic it, it did catch my eye but again as mike said a uh, great image just um, among all the other entries it just didn't quite didn't quite make it for me completely agree come on everybody let's send dave some positive vibes for the next image because trust me the poor guy is going to be sweating <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh goodness yes right are we ready next image is come here I'm trying a, a different approach and i'm hoping it's working and it appears to be so look at that excellent we're in get in so again forgive me because we had techie things i haven't got these here and it's so small on my screen i can't see the name david who who's this one by so this is a this is a I, i'm gonna hazard a guess at picon lentisco uh picon lentisco uh, and i'm going to assume that he's uh, portuguese or brazilian or or something uh maybe south, somewhere south american mm. and i mean he you know he's 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 written a great thing about how he's involved with this NGO, with this aid organization, which is a fantastic thing. Now, some of you may be going, that's not a particularly beautiful picture, but it is a picture which can tell a story. Um, you know, I, th I think there's a few things that that need a little bit of addressing. Now, obviously, the first one is probably the color. There's some very strange colors going on there. And I think maybe just a little tilt of the camera to the left so that so that things weren't quite leaning over so much. Now, I know there's a foreshortening of perspective going on there. But the big thing is the colour. I don't know why it's that weird colour and it's very, very contrasty. Um, but I mean, I don't dislike it as a journalistic image. We're not, this isn't a put on the wall and go, ooh, isn't that beautiful image? This is a more journalistic image and, and, and I totally get that. Um, but this, if you could have done something about those colours, maybe something, a bit of post-production, I, I don't know what it needs, but it needs something. What do you think, David? Yeah, I, I'd agree. I think uh, it has a story to tell, uh, and that's very interesting. And, you know, photography can take many forms. It can be you're trying to create art or beauty, or you're trying to tell a story in this case, or uh, you're trying to capture some beautiful scenery or capture a decisive moment. And all of those are equally valid. And this is very much in the storytelling realm. Um, I'd agree with Mike, there's some, I mean, there's a lot of weird green color going on. It's got too much of a cast for me. Um, and I, I can't decide if it needs more post-processing or if it's had too much post-processing, or maybe it was shot through a, a window with, um, you know, some some two-way film on it or, or something. There's something slightly strange about it. But I love its storytelling. Uh, I love that it's very much of the moment. It, it, it is of this lockdown right now. Uh, and, and it very much tells a story about that. And, and so for that, I think, you know, definitely deserves some, some kudos. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's have a little look at the next one. Because I find this next one quite fascinating. The next one. Here we go. Next one coming up. Now we have... Uh, we, we have a little bit of insight into pictures a bit like this because we, we met a phenomenal photographer. We haven't quite got uh, the picture yet, Dave. Year. Sorry, Dave, we haven't quite got the picture yet. We've sort of got... Here we go. We've got it. We've got it. Sorry, do carry on. Yes, do. we do have insight into these sorts of images and I want to say a few things for Carrie in a moment. You carry on. Go. Uh, so, so, for me, um, I... I think um, this picture is uh, fantastically interesting and I really love the fact that somebody has gone out of their way to spend a, what is clearly a lot of time to create this image, to put it together um, and, and, and actually has had the foresight to try and create this kind of time lapse of a, of a night to day uh, effect. Uh, I think that deserves absolute massive, massive uh, brownie points. Absolutely. I'm just trying to see if I can find while we're speaking. I wonder if I can make this work. So there's a chap called Stephen Wilkes. 
If you Google him, I don't think I can screen share this. I can't do it. Sorry, guys, not during a live broadcast. It is, it's just not going to. Oh, yes, I might be able to. Bear with me. Bear with me. I want to see if I can show you this. Um, here we go. Bear with me. Stephen Wilkes. If you can see these images on my screen, night and day, he has taken shots throughout the day from dawn till dusk and then brought them together and montage them. Now, I'm guessing this is the kind of thing Carrie was trying to do, but it didn't quite work. Now, let's go back to Carrie's picture. Here we go. I think the thing is, Carrie, first off, kudos to you for trying. You spent a whole day taking multiple shots, then trying to bring them together to show how the play of light changed on throughout the course of a day. Now, that is what learning photography is about. It is about practicing. It is about trying things out and not being afraid to get things wrong. Yeah, no one's going to look at this and go, that's an amazing picture. And I would guess some of you right now are possibly checking out, zoning out completely and going, well, what does this doing in here? This is for you guys who are learning. This is how you learn. It's about trying something, taking shots. So what she's done, she's taken shots repeatedly throughout the day and then brought them together to try and show how the light has changed throughout the day. But it hasn't quite worked, partly, I think, because of the subject matter and partly it is a really hard thing to do, a really hard thing to do. So carry kudos to you for putting in so much work and effort and even more for putting it up here to say, mm, well, I gave it a lash, you know, doing that so publicly. That is what it takes, guys. That is what it takes. Don't think that you've got to go out and take amazing shots of herds of wildebeest sweeping majestically across the plain every single time. I don't know about you, Dave. I took many pictures like this when I was learning just to find out what would happen. Oh, God, if you knew the number of pictures I'd taken that had failed. In fact, that I take now and still don't work out. Yeah. You know, you learn with every picture you take, or at least you should be trying to learn with every picture you take. Um, because otherwise you're, you know, you're just recreating the same thing time and again. Absolutely. And who knows, you know, Carrie, you might be the next Stephen Wilkes. Google him, Stephen Wilkes, night and day. Any of you, Google Stephen Wilkes, night and day, and have a look, because his work is amazing. And uh, I kind of got him in mind for a bit of a judge on this, too. <laughs> anyway. Oh, good luck. Uh, Simon suggested him. Should we have a look at the next one? Let's have a look at the next one. Uh, so here we go. Oh, look, this is this is working like this is seamless now. Totally seamless. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Do I want to go first? Uh, OK, I want to go first. So this is a this is a really interesting shot for me. Um, I. I again love the the fact that you've taken time to think about it you've been creative this this falls into the fine art photography category um i feel it's sort of telling a story as well uh, which i find very interesting but for me uh, the background i find a bit too intrusive i love the color i think the colors in this are great but the background needs to be a little more out of focus and and the way you could have done that if you'd literally just moved the apple and the the thread everything forwards away from the background kept your same depth of field, kept your same distance to the apple, the background would have got a bit more fuzzy uh, and wouldn't have competed quite as much for my attention. The light, I think, is a little bit harsh. It looks like window light, um, which is great, but maybe it just needs a little bit of diffusion. Not a lot, but just a little bit of softening um, on uh, across the apple and the thread. It would just take some of the hotness uh, away from those highlight tones. Even just, um, you know, even if it was a bit of, a3 tracing paper just out of shot to the right it would have just softened the light down uh, opened up that shadow ever so slightly and just given it a slightly softer feel um but again i think i think you've done really well to come up with something very very different to what anyone else uh, has has created um and uh, yeah uh, kudos to that yeah, completely agree. It's um, it's like I want to see the front. Also, the front of the apple is very slightly soft, and you know, just by moving your block of sharpness back a tiny bit towards the camera, 
Um, and everything David said, just, just bring it away a bit. Now, for me, I actually disagree with David a little bit. I think the light is great. I really like it. I think it could have done with maybe a teeny bit, a little bit more exposure. If you were shooting raw and you could bring the highlights down a tiny bit on those burnt highlights, which, which Dave rightly mentioned, um, it would be great. The other thing is, I think those are apple pips in the foreground, but they're a little bit lost against the darkness of the wood. And maybe if you could have slid them over so they were kind of sitting in the reflection of the little roll of cotton, they'd have stood out a little more. But I love it. I love the fact you took the time and the effort to create something, to, to get your imagination going. Photography is about creativity and imagination. It's not about the make of camera or the most expensive lens. It is about being imaginative and look how much effort some of you guys that we're just talking about now are putting into practicing and playing with ideas. This is really, really cool. So uh, kudos to you, Heli, for um, giving it a really good go. OK, ready for the next one? Indeed. OK, let's get to that one. We've got two more from your your dailies, Mike. Yes, I know. I, I had There were so many I wanted to have a little chat about. And um... Here we go. Chuck Christ. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be a photographer. <laughs> we had to put this one in. Awesome, Chuck. Awesome. It's like two things. One, you are being a little bit... You, you, you are obviously trying to get in the points here by having three of my online courses displaying on your iPad. So, you know, how could I not say something? But I really like the way you're using the monitors and the iPad to light your face. And it's a really great light. There's just not quite enough of it. If you could have brightened the iPad screen a bit or maybe not had my courses on there, had something which was which was a little brighter, um, I think it would have lit your face more. I think the whole thing could use an eeny bit more exposure, perhaps. Um, but it is really nice light quality on your face. I, I, th I think it's quite a nice idea. I really do. I think it's it's great bit of creative thinking there. You say, David? Yeah, absolutely. The, the light from an iPad, the light from an, from a phone, um, they make great soft lights for portraits if if used properly. And I think this is a really creative way. Uh, it's a really clever way of having done it. Uh, I love the kind of the layers that we have in this. So we we've obviously got you, Chuck, and then we've got you again, and then we've got you again, but upside down and black and white. And it's very. Um, you know, through the looking glass type thing. I feel like I'm stepping through layers uh, in the picture. As Mike said, I'd like just a little more light on your face to really make you stand out. So the, the eye is naturally drawn to something really bright. And that means that I'm naturally drawn to the iPad screen because of all the white and also your eye in the monitor behind you. And that takes me away from your actual face. So. I'd like the iPad screen toned down a little bit, your face a little bit brighter, um, and then I'd be drawn to you as the subject and I'd have everything else as the supporting story. Uh, so remember that, that the eye, the eye is always going to be drawn to something bright in a scene, uh, particularly when the rest of it is so much darker. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. But still, great, great, great shot, Chuck. Well done. Nice to see you working yeah, I, so I'm hard great, there. Great imagination as well. I think, I think you've done... You know, I think you've done really well. You've, you've actually sat down and thought about it, and that's fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. And you're giving my courses, my online courses, a plug. And guys, if it, if you're in lockdown and you've been thinking maybe I should go and do an online course, maybe now's the time to do it. Um, you know, you've got a bit of time. And uh, I had a lovely phone call this morning from a chap, actually, who, who was a bit hesitant about buying one last year. He said, 70 quid, I don't know, will it be any good, and should I, shouldn't I? Um and he told me that he's in the last 12 months from doing my course, he has now gone from 200 followers on Instagram to I think he said it was 28,000. That suggests a big leap. And I was hoping to get some of his pictures and, and, and something from him. And um, he asked me not to mention his real name. Uh, he did ping me an email, but I got it a bit too late to be able to put it all together for this. But yeah, now's a good time to do it. Anyway, sorry. Right. Move on. Here we go. Are you done? Are you done plugging? I am Can never I done. I am never done plugging because I have endless questions from people saying, should I buy this camera or should I buy that camera? And at the end of the day, the camera is so unimportant. It's not true. What is important is your skills with light and shade and light qualities, understanding that your eye is drawn to the brightest part of the picture, just as David said, and then knowing how to reverse engineer because 
settings don't give you pictures. Pictures give you settings. You see the pitch you want, understand how you want to portray it, and that will tell you the settings you need. But the first step is, as David said probably 10 or 15 minutes ago, understanding how to use your camera. I can help you do that. It's like, you know, anyway, it exasperates me a little bit when people are going, well, shall I buy this or shall I? It doesn't matter. Just go and learn how to use it. Anyway, let's have a look at this awesome picture by, again, forgive me, I can't see it. It's too small on my screen. Uh, so this is by Samsara May, and it's obviously uh, a little robin um, sitting on a squirrel statue. And Do you want to lead off or shall I? What better place to sit? Go on then, I'll give it a go. I mean, I really like it. You've got a great decisive moment there. You've captured the robin. Just look into the side. It's a really great decisive moment. Really like the way you position the robin in the frame. The whole composition is great. I'm guessing you shot with a slightly longer lens because you've got great out of focus background, making the robin stand out. The robin is backlit. Beautiful light qualities coming in from behind. You know, it's giving that little bit of rim light just underneath robin's beak there. The only thing for me is I think if you had just an any bit more exposure, if it was just a bit brighter, it would give it a slightly happier feel. And also, I know David's going to talk about this in a moment. It would have just brought the little robin's eye to life a little bit more instead of it being just sort of a black hole in the picture. But otherwise, I think, so I'm sorry, that's a really great attempt and, and well done to you. Uh, I'd agree. I think, you know, some people may say, oh, this is breaking the rules because it's it's the Robin's looking out of frame. And what's with all that space on the right hand side? Um, I think it's a lovely use of negative space. It's mm. very creative framing. Uh, I think that's very well done. Uh, as Mike said, I would love to see just a little bit of catch light in the eye. I think the use of backlight is fantastic. It really helps give that rim uh, around the Robin, really makes it stand out. But for me, I just need a little bit more light in the eye just to bring it to life, just to give it a little bit more sparkle. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I think really well done. Uh, birds are a very challenging subject. Uh, so anyone that, that takes on uh, birds as their, as their subject of choice uh, deserves much respect. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you've done very well. And as I say, that negative space actually really works for me. Um, it, it, it gives it space to, to breathe, I guess. So in future, maybe if you have a flash gun, then just a tiny, and I mean the, the tiniest pop of fill flash uh, on this shaded side would just give you that catch light uh, and maybe just help lift the detail ever so slightly, but you don't want too much, otherwise it's gonna wash out that rim light. Uh, and again, obviously, only if you've got flash. Um, otherwise, if you'd waited for the robin to turn its head the other way and then framed the other side, um, you could have still had that negative space and, and kind of that rule breaking of it looking out of the frame, uh, but you'd have had light in the eye as well. Mm. Uh, but no, really well done, really well done. Yeah, great. Really, really, really loved the effort, all of you guys, and so many more of you have put in. I mean, there's two and a half thousand people now joining in on this. I'd love to talk about all of them. I really, really would, because you're totally rocking it. But there we go. So now I think we're into your runners-up, aren't we, David? We are, we are into my runners-up. And so I don't I know am... who these people are. Guys, I chose these ones to talk about, and I don't know. David might bring up something we've already done. I don't know. I'm leaving this. This is David. David's judging. I've had no okay, part in this. So, so I'm going to show you. These These are the ones. I told you that when I went through my, my first selects, uh, and as I culled down and down and down, uh, these were the ones I think by the third time that I'd got down to. These didn't include the winners. So these were images that all really, really jumped out at me. Um, images that I absolutely loved for a whole variety of different reasons. Uh, I thought they really encapsulated the whole color of life theme. Uh, I thought they were very well captured. They were very creative concepts. So if your image is in here, very very well done because you got very very close to to being in my final selects but but this hopefully goes to show that um when you're judging these it, it really isn't easy there are so many fabulous images uh to to pick from uh and the the a judge's task is is actually quite quite tough and challenging particularly when the standard is is this high so anyone in here absolute massive congratulations uh, and now I'm going to move on to my runners up. Um, and uh, these yeah. are in no particular order. Yeah, huge kudos. Okay. While David's sorting out his, his uh, 
his uh, screen. Yeah, huge kudos to everybody. And, and I think all the images on that selection David just showed you were absolutely breathtaking. You are all winners in one way or another. Wow. Okay, so this is one of my runners up. Um, now, why is this? Uh, why is this a runner up for me? Firstly, I'm a cyclist, uh, so so a bike's always going to catch my eye. But but this stood out to me as it's not the best picture in the set, um, but it's a really creative picture. You've really spent a lot of time doing this light painting and it was so totally different to anything anyone else posted um, that it, it, it deserved much recognition for that. Um, I think, you know, you've done really, really well with this uh, and it could, it could do with uh, a little bit more for me. Uh, I, would, uh, I would like the background to be darker uh, a little bit. Uh, if the background was darker, I think it would uh, it would work a bit better. Um, you would just have bike against black. Um, but even so, just just so well done, Mike. What are your thoughts? I, I, I can only echo your own, really. I mean, I went on a workshop by a guy many years ago. I'm trying to remember his name. He was another Steve. Steve, somebody he uh, specialised in light painting. Um, it is so much work. Who, uh, I can't see the name. Sorry, David. Who 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 is this by? This is Matthew Brown. Matthew Brown. Matthew Brown. Well done, Matthew Brown. You put a lot of work into that. That took a lot of work. And if you're unfamiliar with what light painting is, guys, it's about opening the shutter of your camera and then painting bits of the picture in with light. And how you have gone about doing some of these, I, I'm not sure, but it's a really creative thing. Uh, I think I think I'd say you know I rarely look at pictures and think how was that done and then have to think about it. This one, I actually had to stop and think, uh, how, how have they gone about this? How have they actually, like, I understand light painting, but how have they done this light painting? Mm. And any picture that makes me do that is always going to, to stand out for me uh, because it's, it's such, a, it's such a, a rare thing for me to come across as, as a, oh, my God, how did, they, how did they manage to do that? Mm. Um, that I have to really reverse engineer. So, yeah, absolutely, really, really well done, Matthew. Um, very creative um love the the effort that you've put in nice one matthew well uh, okay done. Uh, next up next up uh uh next up is this one okay now in uh in mike's little introductory video where he uh where he announced the topic um he, he gave a little bit of a talk of things that I suggested, and one of them was some intentional camera movement, or ICM as it's sometimes known. Mm -hmm. And there were several uh, that did it. In fact, uh, I'm yes, I'm pretty sure another one of my runners up has some ICM in it. Uh, this for me, green is the color of life, right? You know, green is where everything starts because it's what gives us life. It's plants, uh, it's that chlorophyll, and just a lovely abstract arty picture. I could see this. Um, I could see this printed large on a canvas, hung on a wall somewhere, uh, bringing brightness and life to a room, uh, and it, it just jumped out at me that you know the the sweeps of of colour uh, has a real paint, painterly effect, and and so that for me was a, was a great standout picture. It is really great, <clears throat> and. It kind of interests me because it's like it's grasses. So is this relatively short grass and somebody's right down on their hands and knees doing little tiny movements of the camera because there's not a lot of movement in there. It's just enough. You know, if you do too much, you might lose what it is. But yeah, uh, absolutely cracking. Well done. You're a well-deserved runner up there. Good. Right. Next up. Uh, next up. That's a oh. good one, Dave. <laughs> yeah, done in lockdown. <laughs> You're not yes. allowed to enter your go. own photos, David. I'm terribly sorry. Wow. Uh, okay, right. This one. Isn't that great? Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, Belan Pibal. And Man, well done. I think this is a frozen bubble. Um, and I absolutely love it. 
I, I love the rainbow going through it. The refraction of light is fabulous. I love the patterns of the, the, the frozenness. Um, uh, yeah, really, really nicely done. Uh, lovely macro. And um, why did it answer colors of life for me? Well, it, it's the rainbow, it's the refracted light. And obviously my surname's Newton, so I have a bit of a thin thing for, uh, for refracted light. Um, so yeah, it, it just caught my eye, stood out as a, as a great image. Indeed, I don't think I can add anything. Sorry, I moved my microphone. Indeed, I don't think I can add anything to what David has just said. It is the refraction of the light. I mean, how on earth do you go about freezing a bubble? That is way beyond my knowledge and ability, actually. It's, it's, uh, it's great. Beautifully done. Perfect. Fine. <laughs> nothing to add. I've got nothing okay. to add. I think uh, you've said it all. Okay. Oh, this one. Oh, this is this is this is a beautiful, beautiful image. Um, oh. Now, in in contrast to pretty much all the other pictures that I've selected, this one is not super colourful. It's just stunning. It's a really beautiful character study portrait. Um, some people might say, oh, you know, you've chosen this because this is a, you know, this is a modern day hero going out to work. Absolutely not. That's amazing in itself. And uh, Tim, Tim Freed, I would just like to openly say a massive thanks to, to your wife for the work she's doing uh, in this pandemic. But actually, I picked this purely on photographic merit fabulous portrait one of one of only a few portraits that uh, that I, I came across uh, in the selection and this one stood out head and shoulders above everything else the light is amazing um the black background really makes us stand out colors are, are, are great it's just it also tells a story as well you've not gone for a classic tight light and bright headshot you can see the the strain and the stress and the the sorrow coming through in the picture in in waves uh, and it, yeah, just beautiful just beautiful i completely agree it's um it's the light which makes it it is perfect for the subject the the play of of light and shade of, of dark and bright um, the light's almost coming from just slightly it's almost it's almost like it's coming from slightly behind her and it's just gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Those of you who are struggling with understanding light and the qualities of light, this is a great example. The way you understand the qualities of light is by looking at it. So like if you are looking at another human being, don't just look at them. Look at where the shadows are. Is there a shadow here? Is it bright there? Where are the shadows falling? Those are the qualities of light. And this light's quite hard. It's quite shadowy, but um, it totally works. It totally works. So just, just to add, for those of you learning about light, and frankly, that's what we're all doing, the positioning of the head here is so well captured because if, if, if Tim's wife's head had been turned just three degrees, I guess, further to the right, so as you're looking, it would be the left of the picture, the light would have gone from that, that shaded eye and it would have completely lost it the fact that the head is in just that position where you've got the light catching the shaded side of that eye on the shaded side just totally brings this to life it gives a whole extra depth to the image uh, and it's just it's just fabulous use of light frankly fabulous use of light it is superb use of light guys keep your questions coming in because we're going to be going to q a fairly soon um, keep keep posting your questions. Uh, I'm seeing there's some great conversations. There's over 500 of you watching at the moment live, and I think that's amazing. Thank you all. Okay, okay next, next one, image. David. I was actually killing time so you could get the next one ready, but <laughs> oh, sorry, I that's all right, my bad. That's all right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. So David. this one, David. David, there can you go. just say whose it is at the start of each one, please? I can. Uh, so this is uh, Mahesh K. Mahesh K, not, not, not just, just a K, the letter K. Um, okay, so this is a runner-up for me because it was one of the very best uh, ICM pictures, like the grasses, uh, caught my eye, fabulous selection of colours. They go really well together. That teal uh, is brilliant, the orange in the top left and, and the pink. I, I 
wouldn't without you telling me i would never have guessed it was biscuits cookies and milk boxes and some mm. veggies um but um i i'd have thought it was some colorful scarves or something but for me again just a beautifully beautiful painterly feel to it something that i would uh, i would see as a great abstract to hang on the wall a lovely piece of art um very very well done great choice of shutter speed i think mike alluded to this with the grasses earlier on if you're going to do in-camera movement, the shutter speed is so crucial related to how fast you're moving the camera. Because if you have a really slow shutter speed and move the camera slowly, you don't get enough movement, maybe you get too much. You, you have to play around with these settings and it takes experimentation. Um, and, and while to some people they'll just go, well, that's just a, a mess of colors. It actually takes a bit of skill to get the right combination of shutter speed and motion to get things where you want them to be and to create those those shapes and tones in the image. So, yeah, Mahesh, uh, really, really well done. Yeah, great job, Mahesh. It, it is everything David said. It's, it is. It's the sort of thing you see on the walls gracing an office block or a hospital or something like that. It's just an easy, pleasing image to look at. And um, just to add to what David said about camera movements, um, if any of those of you who watched the video challenge for, for this week, uh, when I was doing the little zoom blur thing with my motorcycle crash helmet on the table, it was the tiniest amount of zoom to get that little bit of movement. It's a tiny amount sometimes. It, it is about experimentation. Just like, forgive me, I've forgotten your name, the lady who um, did that wonderful thing with the time lapse as the light was changing all day it takes experimentation to get these things right congratulations um, Mahesh. that's a great shot just just on that if you're going to do if you're going to do zoom bursts try zooming in and try zooming out because mm. they will look different make sure you experiment with both uh, and um, also uh, as I said experiment with different shutter speeds and different speeds of movement um, because that will that will really nail it for you. Try going a bit faster, a bit slower. It really, uh, it, it really does make a difference. It really does. Uh, there we go. Right. And so now we're going are to we get going a into winner. winner land. Are we? We're going to the winner. This is this is my winner. Is so just before ready for we this? just before we do, I'll tell you what, David. Yeah. I'm just going to come out of here and come oh. back on the screen myself. You bring it up. You get it ready. I'm just going to come. It's there, right. Okay, it's just so that we can reveal beautifully. <coughs> so, excuse me. So what have you run us up? You have won places onto some forthcoming webinars. Um, my apologies, they're not in place yet. We've been really working very, very hard, myself and the rest of the gang, to make all of this work. And so they are coming. We're going to have some great webinars. You've all won some places. So the winner will get to choose any of my online photography courses. Now, I totally get the illogical nature of that because if you're the winner, maybe you don't need one. True, but we can always refresh our knowledge. We can always look at things. And if you have won one, you can always gift it to somebody else if you so wish. It's not a problem. Just let us know. So let me come back and bring David back on screen with his winner. Oof. Me or the winner? The winner. There you go. Bring the no, winner. No, it's bring the me. winner. It's winner. Okay. So Barry Johnson. Barry Johnson is the winner. And frankly, wow. Um, you you say in your comment that you hate pinks, but this lockdown has made you look at colours differently. <laughs> and now pink is in. Um, what I find really interesting about this is it's just such a delicate, delicate image. Um, it's got a really bright uh, bright color to it that pink background is fabulous um, but it's it's the softness and the delicacy of this image that, that really really drew me and I mean frankly pretty much any one of my runners-up could have been the winner but this one just jumped out at me um, as being very well executed and, uh, and and just just a lovely pleasing image something that I could sit and look at for an extended period of time it's a great choice of depth of field um, you've got all the little fronds of the seed head uh, pretty much sharp. Uh, there's the little droplet on it. There's there's so many layers within this. Uh, and uh, yeah, just, just really very, very nice. What I find really interesting 
when I was looking through the pictures, is actually this did not get a lot of love uh, when it was posted. Uh, I can see here it had 19 likes or loves um, compared to some others that had had many, many more. And that shows just how subjective photography is. Um, and, and it also means that you should never be disheartened if one person or two people don't like your picture because I guarantee other people will. Um, you just need to stick at it. Yeah, beautiful image. Uh, really relaxing, really easy on the eye. Um, calming, I think, would be the word. Uh, calming and delicate. Absolutely sum, beautiful. Sum Absolutely beautiful. And I love the use of negative space. It's a, That's all, all contributing to it being calm. The use of negative space by having the subject small in the frame. It just makes it a lovely, quiet, peaceful, beautiful image. And it is another piece of art photography. It's something which, you know, we see on the wall. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I, so, I sorry, think... So uh, can you remind me of the winner's name? Sorry. I can. It's Barry Johnson. Barry Johnson. Congratulations, Barry. Johnson. Barry. I think that's an amazing picture. I think everybody's done an incredible job. And uh, don't forget that right after we finish this live broadcast, the next challenge will be going up. We'll be announcing who the next judge is as well. Um, but also, I, so congratulations, Barry. Congratulations, everybody. Now I think we should go into just possibly doing a few Q&As. I know there's a few questions that have been would you, uh up. Would you like me to come back on screen? Would you you like come back on live? screen, okay. please, Dave. You come back. I, on I mean, to be honest, I'd, I'd much rather you sat and looked at, looked at Barry's pictures some more because <clears> it's far no, prettier to, than I am. We want to look at you, mate. <laughs> oh, you say the nicest things. Oh, right. So here we go. There you go. David, Hello, everybody. And here's me as well. Now, apologies, guys, because the light is appalling in here now because with all the panicking trying to get online, I forgot to do things. And there, there we go. So just sorry. So let's have a little look. We've got a few questions going on here. So Glenn Haskins has asked, David, what's the one thing you want to include in your photo to make them interesting? Wow. Um, that's yes, not a big question I at all. <laughs> I just um, is it, is that, that you, on you, mate. Is that you, you just palm it straight onto me. Uh, that's not a big question at all, is it? Um, oh, there are so many things. Um, go on. Do you want me to pick it up? It sounds like you were about to help me out then. I, I, I was, on, but I, 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 I don't out. necessarily need to. I'd say there is no one thing that you want to include in your photo to make Cheat. it interesting. Because, but there really isn't. It's like, look at the variety of things we have just looked at. There is no one thing. Some of them have got intentional camera movement to create movement and blur. And on the images where it is intentional and it has been done for a reason, it looks fantastic. If you get camera movement on a shot where it's inappropriate, then it doesn't look fantastic and it ruins the shot and stops it from being interesting. And also interesting is a subjective term. Um, what is interesting to one person is not interesting to another. Um, you know, somebody may sort of look at any of the shots that we've looked at today carry shot the time lapse i know i keep going back to it and it's because of the volume of work that has gone into that and it's not the most interesting picture to me it's interesting because i'm looking at the backstory i'm looking at the effort and the work and the practice and the attitude the really hardcore attitude that's what made it interesting to me so i don't know david have you had time to think of something yet i'm gonna go, while you speak uh, i'm I... gonna go and turn the light on <laughs> Go for it. You go turn the light on. Uh, so I I think um, what what makes an image great? It's a whole combination of things. It's it's the right camera settings. It's thinking about composition. You've asked for one thing, a strong subject. Find out what your strong subject is. Make sure that there's something for the viewer's eye to rest upon. To catch you up, Mike, I said a really strong subject helps. Something for the viewer's eye to rest upon. Um, I think that's a really good start point. It, it's not going to work for every picture, and I've put up several pictures that I selected as winners that have apparently no subject, particularly the in-camera movement ones. Um, so it doesn't always work, and that kind of goes to Mike's cheating, but actually very truthful answer that there is no one thing, uh, no one thing at all that, that makes a great picture. Um, Absolutely. It's a combination of so many different things. 
And just so you know, guys, Dave is really into in-camera movement. While I go and have a look for the next question while you're chatting, are you able to bring up the one you posted onto the... Uh, we, we, are, we are both members of another photography lockdown type challenge thing, which is really amongst a lot of the speakers and, and other photographers who are involved with exposure. Um, David shared one. If you've got it, if you want to share it while I just dig up the next question. I'm sure Go I can manage that. I'm <clears> just <throat> going to share screen. Are you sure, uh, mate? Because I know what you're like this evening. I you, am. You... <laughs> I'm sharing a screen. Here we go. I'm sharing a screen. He's gone into Dalek mode. Hopefully, it will come back. Isn't that an awesome picture? David, speak. Oh, can you hear me? Have I come you're, back? You're, you're a total Dalek at the moment. Do you mean I'm a total Dalek? How can I be a total Dalek? You are. Your audio has absolutely gone. Oh, honestly. Hang on a moment. There's no other microphones to use. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I'll talk about your picture for a moment while you fiddle with microphones. So David posted this this intentional camera movement shot into the group a day or two ago. I think he's back. I can hear him shuffling. And uh, got a lot of reactions. This is intentional camera movement. Do you want to tell anyone what it is, Dave? Uh, okay, so can you hear me now? Have I stopped being yes. a Dalek? Yes, yes, Or do yes, I need to good. start saying exterminate and struggle to get up and down stairs? No, you're um, good, mate. I'm good now. Okay, so this um, this is uh, an interesting picture. Um, I I didn't, uh, you know, I, I took it, so I obviously thought it was something uh, of interest. But it's one of those pictures that, you never quite know what's going to happen, and that's always the case with uh, with in camera movement. So this is uh, this is a fisheye lens. Uh, so it's a Canon. I'm a Canon shooter, so it's Canon eight to fifteen mil fisheye, um, and uh, I had uh, an ND filter, so I could get a very slow shutter speed on it. Uh, and I stood under a willow tree. And it would have looked hilarious to anyone watching because I stood there and swung the camera around my head while it was on a two-ish second exposure. Uh, and I did it several times until I got something that was interesting. Now, the bright lines across the top is the sun coming through the trees. Uh, and the, the golden line across the bottom is a reflector that I placed on the ground to pick up some of the light. Uh, the green band through the middle is, um, is is obviously the light coming through the willow trees and the, the brown at the bottom is just the, the ground underneath. Um, yeah, uh, the thing about photography, the thing about art in general is that um, it can be, it is so subjective. And, you know, I look at this and oh, that's, I quite like that. It's quite different. It's interesting. I liked it enough that I thought I would post it online and I would see what kind of comments I got. The comments that came back from people whose opinion I greatly respect, <laughs> that they thought it was a fabulous image. And as the creator, I still slightly struggle to see why. Um, I remember seeing a cartoon uh, I, I remember seeing a cartoon years back of a, an artist going to uh, their own exhibition at an art gallery and the, the, the tour guide was taking a tour group round and they get to a picture and they explain all about it and the artist goes, oh, now I know what I was trying to do. And it can be so like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. That's probably a very polarising picture. Some people will love it. Some people will, will hate it. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Absolutely. <coughs> Come back to us, David. Come back. Um, I'm going to get rid of it. It's been up there. Yeah, we're going to need plenty to long on. enough. We're going to need to move on a little bit because we're running well over time, um, and you guys are being really great. What have we got here? Well, there's a few technical questions, such as what's the best macro lens for a Nikon camera, etc. Guys, it really doesn't matter. I think David would agree with me in that these days. Pretty much all equipment is a very good quality. Stop worrying about what the best lens is and think more about how best you can improve your skills. Don't upgrade your kit. Upgrade your skills, I think, is the key to all of this. Stop worrying about what's the best lens, the best camera, the best body. The da -da 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 -da. Don't listen to the whispers online. What do you say, David? Uh, I'd agree. You know, um, cameras for sure are only as good as the person using them. Um, lenses can certainly help, but 
you if you've got one lens you can go out and make fabulous pictures with whatever lens that is um just learn to use it learn to work within its capabilities uh, and and you will create fabulous images you don't need to upgrade him. having kit mv never helps um, but learning a new skill learning a new technique always helps completely completely it's why my sort of dominic my stepson from many many years back when he was six years old he'd grab his mum's mobile phone and he just go come over your phone mum and he just wander off and take amazing pictures he somehow instinctively understood light and shape and form and where to stand and when to click and what worked and what didn't just with a phone we see it all the time uh question here from Joza pretz Prezeski. david you need to be careful with this one david because i know it's a big question david which photographers okay. influenced you and how did they influence your thinking in photography and career path See if you can do that one in under a minute. I actually can. Uh, I, I actually can. Unlike uh, un unlike many photographers, I don't spend a lot of time looking at other people's work until I go to exhibitions. So until I go to things like Exposure, where I'm I'm just immersed in it. Um, there are uh, many people, some famous, some not so famous whose work influences me. I see phenomenal work um, from, from people that are effectively complete amateurs, uh, but who have a, a great eye or a great technical understanding innately. Um, I would say uh, there was a guy I used to work for uh, many years ago. I was a, a picture editor at Wildlife Picture Library. It was owned by a guy called Stephen Dodson, and he did some seminal high-speed flash work of insects, he was the first person to photograph a, uh, a flea jumping. And from that, we learned that fleas jump backwards. Um, and he photographed a, a basilisk, Jesus lizard, running across the water. Absolutely incredible stuff. Um, I guess he probably had uh, an influence on me because his work was so technically strong uh, that I then embraced the technical side of photography. Um, and, and I think that probably... I, I'd probably say he was one of my biggest influences. Stephen Dalton, uh, recommend you go check him out. He's 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 in his uh, I guess he's in he's in his late eighties now. Uh, Quick couple of short shout outs. So uh, the chat with the image of the little girl with the blocks, life blocks. Yes. Uh, his name yes. is Najib. Bilkadi. Thank you, Najib. Um, also, uh, we've had a message from Kate Lord. Uh, with the towel and the motorcycle equipment. Yep, Kate is yep, a yep, biker. Yep. Kate is a motorcyclist. So that's good to know. Um, we've got one more question here, and then I think we're probably going to need to start coming to the end. Um, if you don't if you don't pick it up, there's a question I saw come through that I'd love to answer. Okay, we'll or, do one more, yeah. and then you pick up yours, and then there's just one more thing I want to add, because Emma sent me a message and said, by the way, the sound dropped when you were saying that, so I'm going to come back. Okay. Tim Freed, I've been struggling to find a style. Is it something I should continue working at, or should I just keep shooting and let it happen naturally? I know what I'd that, say. That was the one that I that was the one that I wanted to pick up on. And I'm <laughs> you going see to say, great minds. Tim, keep doing what you're doing. That image was beautiful. Just keep doing it. That doesn't mean don't do anything else. For the love of God, experiment and do all sorts of other things. But that image was cracking and if you can send out work like that day in day out you have a phenomenal photographic future ahead of you completely and it, it, it and it is it is it. people stop worrying about creating a style if you keep shooting if you keep experimenting if you keep doing stuff you will you will begin to develop a style it will come out of the woodwork it will come out of the pores of your skin um you know you've heard all the things that david does you know and yet the other day he's out in the park with his dog swinging his camera around around his head to see what would happen yeah, this is how you do it. You just keep practicing. We're all on a learning journey all the time. And the day you think you know it all is the day to pack it in. Um, as I say, somebody phoned me this morning and said he was highly skeptical. And he thought, I'm not a beginner. I don't need your ultimate beginner's course. And yet he told me that he invested the 69 quid and it's taken him from 200 likes to 28 odd thousand on Instagram. You know, that's amazing. It's amazing. And it, and it gives me a warm feeling. It's why I do teaching. It's like big light bulb moment. All the rest of it. But so God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, 
I'm going to say when you're taking a bit, um, given that I, I'm guessing that most people these days are shooting digitally, there's probably very few film photographers on here. Um, I, uh, I, I, digital photography means it doesn't cost you anything to take a picture. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. You should approach every single picture with one overriding question in your mind, and that is, what if? What if I tried this? What if I tried that? What if I tried something else? Because that's when you're going to discover something new. You're going to step out of your normal box. You're going to push your boundaries. And you, a lot of the time, you'll fail. Good God, the number of times I have and still fail at pictures because I'm trying something new. But just occasionally, it comes up with a, oh, what? oh, that actually worked. Mm. Oh, look at that. Oh, now I can file that away in the back of my mind and ne another time in the future go, oh, that, that, yeah, I remember. Oh, let me try that again and see what happens this time. And so approach every question with what if. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think we pretty much come to the end of what, our. Can I, can, 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 can I keep going? Can I keep going? There was go one on, more. David. Sorry. Go on, David. Sorry. Go on, David. Somebody, somebody said, and it's so important, uh, uh, and I'm just scrolling back because I want to get it exactly right, but the paraphrase was uh, it was from Tanweer Hader. Tanweer Hader. Question How do you practice seeing light? That is a great question because light is the basis of everything we do as photographers. Uh, I'm sure Mike said it. I've said this immeasurable times. The word photography uh, comes from Greek photographos. It means light painting or light drawing. Uh, and seeing light is so important. And the best way to practice seeing light is to just sit and look. Mm. You don't always have to be taking a picture. Just study your subject sit somewhere and watch see Look how the light changes and if i can demonstrate have a little light here okay yeah get a light if you want to do portrait get a little light like this sit somebody down you're a half somebody willing there's no camera involved so they don't have to worry about their picture being taken and then just do this move the light around them Look at the light changing on David. Look at look at the light changing on David's face as he's doing that. Look, if you hold it about, hang on, come forward a bit, David. About there, yeah. Look, you see, look, there's a shadow, a triangle coming off the bottom of David's nose. One side of his face is brighter than the other. This is all it is. You can learn light. You don't need a camera to do that. And I think our next week's judge is going to have a lot to say about that. Oh, but yeah. it's it's like. You don't. You learn light by looking. If you know, you've seen. Look at David. He's moved the light. You see, every time he moves the light, he looks completely different. And that's all there is to it. There is nothing more complicated. Trust me, guys. Don't let the magazines, don't let all these pundits all over social media telling you that photography is difficult and complicated. It isn't. It is practice. It is understanding the controls you need, how to harmonise them together. And how to pre-visualize, how to, you know, and you do that by looking. If you just look at well, me at the moment, look, this, this, sorry, this side of my face is a bit brighter than that side of my face. Did you see the light change then? It's because this laptop next to me, look, now I've just brought the light back on. Yeah, it's that simple. That's all you need to do. So uh, I'm going to come back to you in a moment, David, but there's something I really want to okay. share because I, I messed up earlier. Forgive me. Um I just want to share this because there was no sound. Kathy Muir has been on several of my courses. She's a musician, she's a songwriter, and she is raising some money and awareness for the Red, Claw, Red Cross during current corona, etc. She is sitting on the seventh step doing seven songs every Saturday evening. Great little concerts. They're live on Instagram. If you go there, uh, just have a look at this. Grab a shot with your phone. Uh, I would really appreciate it, and I know she would appreciate your support. So I think beyond that, we all I need to say is that we'll be posting the next challenge very soon. Another reason I need to get offline, because there's an automated email going to be wigging out to everybody who has left their details on the website so that you don't miss anything. If you're part of the challenge, guys, and so many of you are posting questions and sending private messages through the Facebook group. I'm sorry, there's too many. We can't keep up. Um, if you need to know anything, visit the web page. Okay, my site, 
photo lockdown photographycourses.biz forward slash photo lockdown there is a link below this video there are links all over the place there are links in the facebook group go and have a look that will tell you when things are happening how to upload your pictures you must always remember to use the hashtag please do not upload archive pictures each competition ends at midnight UK time on a Thursday. Please don't enter pictures after that time because they're not going to be counted. OK, please do not enter images after midnight on a Thursday. Always remember the hashtag. It's in each challenge video and stay informed by going to the photography lockdown page on my site and uh, just pop your email address and your name into the little form at the bottom there. And we will make sure you don't miss anything and then you don't have to keep asking questions about how do I see the winner? How do I do this? How do I do that? When's the next competition? OK, so all that remains for me really is to say, David, thank you very much indeed for your time and for your energy. Absolutely welcome. And you put a lot thank of work so into much, that. Thank uh, you so much for inviting me and for, um, for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I hope people have enjoyed it. I hope people have enjoyed our little chat and discussion, uh, found it useful and interesting because that's frankly why we do this right we we hope people we hope people like us but thank that we, we hope they learn something right that's what it's all about isn't it it's all about learning something new so um thank you everybody big shout out to all of you who arrived uh who are listening who are still with us um it's great i'm seeing all these messages coming in all these votes of thanks thank you all very very much indeed for being here uh, please spread the word about photo lockdown. Use the hashtag, hashtag photo lockdown. It's on the screen now. Um, spread the word. Let's grow this community some more because it's getting so exciting. And I'm loving the way you're all supporting each other on the Facebook page. So without further ado, I'm going to disappear. Please don't send a message saying, where's the next challenge? Just give me a minute. It takes a minute to shut this one down and then get the next one live and sent out. So just hang around. It will be on YouTube and on the website soon. And once again, Many thanks, David. And David, you know, if anybody wants to go and hear David speak, where can they hear you speak when you're doing your Canon stuff? Oh, I will be doing some uh, some live uh, Facebook live webinars um, through various camera dealers in the UK, all free to attend. I'm doing a variety of different things. I'm going to do some macro, some pet photography, some bubbles, uh, some water drops, some processing and printing, so workflow type stuff. Um, if you have a look at Canon UK, uh, they will have a page uh, that tells you um, when I'm doing some Facebook Live. Alternatively, if you follow me on Facebook, whenever I've got one coming up, and there's some coming up this week, I've got three or four this week, um, I'm going to put those up on my Facebook page um, or, or probably my Instagram as well. So go follow me there and you'll find out, uh, find out what's going on and when. I look forward to seeing some of you on there. I will make sure there is a link to David's website below this. I'm not sure if one went on before because panic, panic, panic. Um, I'll make sure there is one there within the next hour. So um, go check David out. Once again, thank you very much, David. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Take care, guys. Take care.